Do you like poking fun at things? Well, not like that. I like poking fun at light. Join me, Eric Muller, as we build a pinhole viewer and you can learn about science, math, and even art. In order to build your pinhole viewer, you're going to need the following materials. You're going to need some wax paper, aluminum foil, cardboard tubes, and you can use toilet paper tube inserts or paper towel inserts, but I prefer to use packaging tubes. What I do is I take these rugged tubes and I cut them down using a hacksaw. They work great. You also definitely need some rubber bands and most importantly, a pin to make your pinholes. Next, you're going to need colored light bulbs. You're going to need a red, green, and blue light bulb. These are compact fluorescent light bulbs, but I prefer colored LEDs. You're also going to need a screw and socket. Also really important is a power strip that has multiple outlets. Finally, an extension cord will help quite a bit. Here's how you build your viewing device. First, you're going to take your wax paper, put it over one end, make sure the wax paper is cut just a little bit larger than your opening on your cardboard tube. Put your rubber band around it to keep it secured. Next, put the aluminum foil, which is also cut just to the right side. On the opposite side, put your rubber band around that and your device is ready to go. If you're going to be doing your activity where there's going to be a lot of ambient light, I highly recommend wrapping your device in some black construction paper. In order to do that, I recommend wrapping the paper so that your wax paper is going to be covered and the aluminum foil is going to be exposed on this end. After you wrap it, put two more rubber bands to secure the wax the black paper onto your device. So now it's time to poke our first hole at light. So I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to pop a hole right in the center of the aluminum foil. I'm going to twirl it around a little bit just to make sure the hole is nice and round. I got one hole in there. So I am now going to point the aluminum foil at the light. I got a red light turned on behind me. And I am going to look at the wax paper, and I'm going to look at the wax paper as though it's a TV screen. I'm going to hold my head about 20 to 30 centimeters away from it so I can see what I can see on there. I see a red bulb. What do you see? So I decided to come back over here and mess around with the bulbs myself. I handed my device, the pinhole viewing device, to my colleague Gene. Say hi, Gene. To get a better view of everything on that screen, I highly recommend turning the lights down in the room as much as possible. Great. So if you notice, the red light is on my left. And all you see is that one red light. But now I'm going to turn a green light on, and this green light is on the right. Watch what happens. Are they inverted? Isn't that amazing? So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my hand from the left to the right and cast a shadow. And then I'm going to go from right to left. It's inverted. Let me try going from top to bottom and bottom to top. Inverted again. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to show you what's going on. So you might be asking yourself, how in the world do you get an inverted image on the back of your screen with your pinhole viewer? Well, I'm going to use some models to show you how it's done. So here's my pinhole there, and I'm going to use this green bulb. So in order to see something, a ray of light has to come off of your object, or in this case, the green bulb. If a ray of light goes from the top of the bulb, it will hit the aluminum foil in various places and get blocked. 
only the ray of light that's able to get right through that center pinhole will make its way to the back screen so that you can see the image. So now, instead of using aluminum foil, I'm going to use this to model my pinhole on my device. So the ray of light goes through, and it goes through the pinhole, and you'll notice that the ray of light that goes from the top seems to be going downward. The ray of light that's going to be coming off of the bottom of the bulb to get through that pinhole seems to be going upwards. And that's the only direction it could go in order to make it to the back screen. So what you get is the bottom of the bulb is on the top now, and the top of the bulb is now on the bottom. That's how you invert your image using a pinhole. One of the great things you can do with your poking fun at light apparatus is math. You can do math with bulbs and pinholes. You can actually come up with uh, an unpublished law of science. So right now we have one hole and one bulb and you should see one image. Now I'm going to pop one extra hole in the aluminum foil and see what you can see. So now we have one bulb, two holes, you should see two images. Next, I'm going to turn on an extra bulb, so now we're going to have two bulbs, two holes. What do you see? I bet you see four images. You can do a whole bunch of permutations on this one and figure out how the bulbs and the pinholes relate. I'm going to quiz you. What about three holes? and three bulbs. What do you think you'll see? Nine. You can come up with a whole variety and do experiments, but it'll always work. It actually is a law of science. Try it and have fun doing it. For this portion of activities for poking fun at light, we're going to use all three of these bulbs. You might be asking yourself, why have we chosen just these colors? That's because in your eye, you only have receptors for red, green and blue lights. That's it. Everything you see is caused by activating your red, green, and blue receptors. We're going to start our activity by only using the red and the green. Right now I have one small hole. You should see the red bulb and the green bulb. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pin and I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to enlarge that hole. I'm going to make it really big. Do you see the overlap of the red and the green bulb? What color do you see? Do you see yellow? Is there a yellow light over here? No, I don't think so. You see yellow because your mind makes it up. Yellow is triggered by the overlapping of red light and green light. When your eye brain system receives equal amounts of those, you see yellow. Interestingly enough, red and green between them in the spectrum is yellow. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the red and I'm going to turn on the blue. So now I have a blue bulb on, I have a green bulb on. You still make those up in your mind, but look where they overlap. What color do you see there? You see kind of a turquoisey color? That color is called cyan. You make that up in your mind too. There's no cyan bulb here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the red bulb and I'm going to turn off the green bulb. Do you see the color where those overlap? It might be kind of a purplish color. We call that color magenta. Here's the weird thing. You not only made that up, that is not even in the spectrum. You made this up in your mind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn all three bulbs on. Guess what you're going to see? What do you see now? You see white? You made that up too. Everything is made up. There's no white light over here. If you get equal amounts of red, green, and blue light, you make up white light. Isn't that interesting? You can make a whole bunch of color combinations just by turning lights on and off, or by even putting your hands in front of them and trying to dim some down more than others. One question, how do you think you'd make black? I'm going to turn them off. And if black's not your color, try punching some holes in it and make some art. 